I'm a kind of person who likes to get the most out of their investment. And this is exactly what I'm doing in this video. I'm taking the heart and soul of the Ultimate Audio Player 2.0, the Hi-Fi Berry DAC Plus Pro Board, and modifying it to power the analog circuitry directly, not through the Pi. I did read about it a while back, but I just wasn't ready to touch a perfectly working DAC with a soldering iron, right until a few weeks ago. The modification itself is pretty simple, as it comes down to desoldering a resistor and soldering cables or pins to connect the power. I was a little anxious when removing the R14 resistor, so I didn't film it not to jinx it. But this turned out to be easy peasy. As I barely touched the element, it pretty much came right off. As for the power delivery, I soldered a pair of wires, which are later replaced with pins for convenience. I also soldered a set of GPIO pins to connect the Pi since I wanted to do a custom case with two PCBs placed next to each other. If you haven't figured that out just yet, touching a Hi-Fi Berry board with a soldering iron equals instant loss of warranty. So you're doing it at your own risk. The case was designed in Fusion 360 and printed in PDG on a trusty Ender 3. It has integrated standoffs and cutouts for all ports that I need. RCA connectors, power sockets, Ethernet and USB. I couldn't care less for the rest, so it doesn't bother me at all that they are inaccessible. The print came out decent, although there was a slight issue with the standoff's alignment for the DAC. I tapped all mounting points and hoped for the best. There was also a slight issue with the Pi port's opening, which was a little too small, but I fixed that with a file. I also designed and printed top cover, which didn't came out perfect but there's no such thing as a perfect prototype. Next, I sliced a sheet of veneer that I got for this project. It's a pretty funky looking one, with a lighter and darker brown and a touch of green here and there. I sanded the walls a little bit, applied some glue and squeezed both together. After 15 or so minutes, I moved on to bending the veneer around the corner. I sprayed some water onto it and after waiting for a while, I tried to model the veneer. Unfortunately, the corner was too tight to make the bend, so I came up with a plan B and designed and printed corner pieces that will make the outline square. I could have properly adjusted the design and make the case more round, but I didn't feel like wasting otherwise a very decent print. I fixed all four with momentary glue, sanded surface a little bit, and put filler in larger gaps. Next, I sanded the filler down and proceeded with attaching the veneer. I applied contact glue on both the veneer and the plastic wall, waited 10 minutes, put the two together and clamped it. After the glue has dried, I cut off the veneer with utility knife and moved on to the next wall. After doing all four, I made openings at the back using utility knife and a round file. To make the device audiophile approved, I got some aluminum tape to reduce any potential electromagnetic interference, at least theoretically. I do have an EMI meter and will have to test if this tape does actually do anything. I decided to reprint the top cover in wooden PLA, which should go better with the veneer. For a very first print using this material, it came out very good. I attached a piece of filtering material to the bottom of the top cover to minimize the dust buildup inside. I prepared a set of female to female cables to connect only essential GPIO pins and two power sockets, one for the DAC and the other one for the Pi. Just for the kicks, I printed my own logo, sanded the letters down and fixed it up front with some glue. With everything ready, I proceeded with assembly. First in went the DAC, held in place with a set of hex screws. Next, I put in both power sockets. After that, I drop in the Pi. And did the wiring. Last but not least, I fixed a set of rubber feet to the bottom surface, put on the top cover 
and the Ultimate Audio Player 3.0 was complete. Software-wise, I'm still running Volumio, which isn't perfect, but good enough for the time being. There's one more very important thing I didn't mention yet. Power delivery. In order to get the most out of your deck, you will need a quality, stabilized power supply. I got mine from China for a little under $100 shipped. It can deliver over 3 amps at 5 volts, so it can easily power the Pi and the DAC. Now, did all that actually improve the sound quality? Yes, it did. I listened to a few of my favorite albums and could definitely hear the difference. If you have the guts to void your warranty and $100 to spare for a power supply, you should definitely consider modding your DAC. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.